Okay, welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna follow up on our discussion of data hazards, and we're gonna look at a different data hazard, often referred to as the load word data hazard. And there's a different solution for resolving this data hazard compared with the other example, the forwarding solution that we saw in the previous video. Okay, so first thing, let's take a look at when this hazard comes up and why. So let's look at the following code and ask the following question. Is there a data hazard that comes up? And uh, if we look at this, right, we're going to notice that there is one that occurs. In particular, there is a hazard that has to do with this dependency for the fact that we have this, uh, this instruction here, the load instruction, okay, the load instruction uh, writes to register 2, Okay, and it's going to write to that register at clock cycle 5 during its write back stage. Okay. And we have this dependency where we have this register being read. Okay. And that register, we could see it would normally be read from the register file during the decode stage. But what we saw with forwarding is we can actually do it a little bit later and that we actually don't really need that value until the execute stage, right? It doesn't actually do anything with that value until the execute stage. And if that's not clear to you why, I'd recommend looking at the previous video and seeing how with forwarding, with forwarding we actually don't really need that value um, until the, we don't actually use it until the following clock cycle, so we actually forward it back into the execute stage. All right, now we have this problem here because the load instruction doesn't read it out of memory until the end of the mem stage. Okay, I'm going to show you this a visual in the diagram in a moment, but just to kind of get a high level view and then we'll look at the pictures. Okay, and we have this issue because here at clock cycle five, that's when we um, are writing it back to the register. Okay, that's really when it's available after having read it from memory. And the AND instruction, okay, it needs it at the third stage, the execute stage, which is going to be clock cycle four. And there's a timing problem here because it's not available until clock cycle five, right? But we need it at clock cycle four. So there's this, there's this dependency that we cannot fix with just pure forwarding alone, like what we saw in the previous video, okay? Now, that's unlike this example here for the OR instruction. If we look at the OR instruction, we could see that this register 2 here, there really is no problem with that because we could forward properly, right? We could forward, um, that one's not needed to the execute stage as well, okay? It's not needed to the execute stage, okay? And because it's one clock cycle later, that's stage 5. We could forward like normal for that one, for instruction three, the OR instruction, because we've got this issue um, where we can write to the register at the beginning of the clock cycle, the first half of the clock cycle, and we can read at the second half. Okay, we could read at the second half. So there's really no issue that we can't solve with forwarding with the OR instruction. The big problem is with this instruction here, instruction two, okay, where we're, because we're reading a register the clock cycle after it's being written from a load. Okay, and let's look at this in the diagram. If we look at the diagram here, okay, we could see that the load instruction does not write back until the stage five. And a very key thing to notice is that we don't actually have that value ready until it's read out of memory, out of data memory in the mem stage. Right, so it's not available to the end of the mem stage, which is effectively not available to be able to use until the following stage. Okay, now that's in contrast, right? It's not ready till here. Okay, however, that's what makes the load instruction different. That's what makes the load instruction different because R type instructions, right? R type. are ready here. Okay, our type are ready one clock cycle earlier. So notice this, this extra time that's needed for the load instruction. Notice this 
it's one stage later in which it's available. Okay, that is the heart of the problem, right? That's the heart of the problem, and that's why we have this low data hazard that comes up, okay? Is it's not available to one clock cycle later, so we have this issue related to uh, how forwarding will not address this because it's just not available until a little bit later on, okay? All right, and as I mentioned before, right, at the execute stage, that's when that register is needed. That's where register two is needed. So we've got this problem in which the value is not ready until here, okay, at stage five. However, it's going to be needed, right? If we have two instructions back to back, it's not ready while the previous, while the next instruction, if instruction one is here, okay, instruction two, notice it's already outside or past the execute stage where it was needed, right? It's already moved beyond that if we don't do something. So forwarding cannot fix this data hazard, okay? Cannot fix it. It just happens, we just have this, it's um, for the fact that the load is not available till later on. So we need to do something different to be able to get this to work, right? And what we're gonna see here is if you notice on the diagram, we have this new control unit that's, that's shown in the CPU architecture diagram here, this hazard detection unit. The hazard detection unit is going to cause our processor to temporarily stall for one clock cycle to allow time to allow this so that we don't have instruction two here while instruction one is in the right back stage. We're gonna stall so that we can move this instruction and delay it so that it is in fact in the execute stage, okay? In the execute stage while the load instruction is in the right back stage, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have, we're just gonna waste a little bit of time. We're gonna put a no op instruction into the mem stage so that we have instruction one followed by a no op which stands for no operation effectively means do nothing okay and then we will put instruction two into this stage so that we now notice if we do it that way we can forward like we just like we saw in the other video and there's not going to be a problem we could forward just like we did in the other video and we're going to have the correct value uh, work correctly. We no longer have that, um, that, that data hazard that comes up related to load if we have enough time, if we have that gap between those two instructions. Okay. Another way to visualize this is we could look at this, this, these examples here and we can notice that um, we have a similar issue, right? We've got these dependencies here, right? And this is showing the load hazard and where if we didn't do anything, if we didn't do anything, we've got this issue where the value is not ready till here and we need it here. And notice that would require us going effectively back in time. It's not ready until the beginning of clock cycle five, okay? And we're trying to access it at clock cycle, the beginning of clock cycle four, right? We can, obviously this is going back in time. This doesn't work, right? So this is the nature of the hazard here. If we didn't, if we didn't do anything, um, to, to address the issue. That would be the hazard there. Okay. Now, that doesn't come up with these other ones. If we look at these other dependencies here, that's fine, right? For the OR instruction, instruction three, the add instruction, instruction four, right? We're gonna use forwarding just like we saw in the other video for those. For, for the OR instruction, we're gonna use forwarding. It's no problem. For the add instruction, we actually don't have to do anything different, right? The value is effectively already available, right? It's already available, we can just go ahead and we're gonna do that issue where we write at the first half of the clock cycle and read at the second half, like was mentioned prior. Um, it has a other issue, it has another, um, we're gonna forward this value here, right? We see it does do that, right? But we, the only problem that we can't solve with forwarding alone is this issue that comes up with the load, right? Notice this is a load instruction and that we have a load instruction followed by something reading that that register, reading that value that register that's being written to. Okay, and again, that's a problem because we've got this issue of going back in time unless we do some sort of stall. Okay, some sort of stall. Let's, so 
another way to visualize this, this is our fix. This is a way of removing that data hazard so that this no longer becomes an issue. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna detect that dependency. We're gonna detect that condition, that load hazard. That's what's gonna happen with the hazard, the uh, data hazard detection unit, okay? And we are going to, what's shown here as a bubble, right? We are going to detect that that happens and we are going to change the instruction to be a no-op instruction, okay? This bubble effectively says, okay, do nothing. And then we're gonna rerun the, we're gonna, we're just delaying the instruction one clock cycle, okay? So that effectively, what's really happening is um, the instruction's going to be in the decode stage twice. It goes IF at clock cycle two. In clock cycle three, it's in the decode. Clock cycle four, it's still in the decode, okay? Hence the delay. It repeats this step, okay? And then going, yeah, execute, mem, right backstage, okay? So effectively what happens is it just sits in the decode stage one clock cycle longer, okay? And we change the control signals for the add instruction. And what we're gonna see here is that what effectively happens is the way that we make an instruction, we turn it into a no-op, a no-operation instruction, is we set all of the control signals to zero, okay? What that does is it effectively means that we're not gonna write or to anything. If you set the register write to zero, it's not gonna write to a register. If you set um, mem write to zero, it's not gonna write to memory. Mem read to zero, it's not gonna read from memory, all right? If you set all the control signals to zero, it effectively makes it so not the state of the system is never changed, okay? You're not gonna update anything. And then we're gonna hold everything back, right? What the hazard detection unit also does is it's got these signals that impact the pipe for the instruction fetch decode pipe. And what it will do is it will say, hey, we're, we're gonna set that value to zero so that it doesn't overwrite the value from one clock cycle. So when it stalls, it's gonna set that to zero so that it does not overwrite the value of that, uh, that pipe. And it's gonna be the same thing during the stall for the PC write. So it says, hey, don't overwrite the program counter for one clock cycle so that we can kind of just hold things back a little bit to delay, um, to delay things briefly, to delay briefly. Um, so let's look at this, right? And what I started drawing here is the scenario where we have the following occur. Let's think of clock cycle um, three here, all right? I'm gonna draw this for clock cycle three. And at clock cycle three, we are going to have the load instruction here. The load instruction is going to be in the execute stage, okay? And the add instruction is going to be in the decode stage, okay? And that is when the hazard detection unit is going to determine and say, hey, there's a problem here. There's a problem for the fact that we are, we are um, writing to a register using a load word, we're writing to register zero in this case, and followed by the following clock cycle trying to read from it, okay? And what that will do is it will set this stall signal here to one so that we set all of the control signals to zero, okay? That effectively makes the instruction a no-op instruction. We will also set the pipe, the instruction fetch decode pipe to zero so it doesn't overwrite it, right? So that it stays, all the values stay the same for one more clock cycle and same with the PC write that the program counter does not update for one clock cycle. The end result will be of that, right? If we take this forward one more clock cycle to clock cycle four, let's draw this for clock cycle four now, okay? And what will happen at clock cycle four all right, is at clock cycle four, we're gonna have the load here, okay? 
and we will have the no op instruction, the no operation instruction here. Okay, the no op. Okay. And then we are going to have our add instruction here. Okay, because we stalled one clock cycle, the add instruction stayed right where it is in the decode stage for one additional clock cycle. Okay, at that point, right, we have removed the data um, hazard. Okay, and, um, I'm sorry, I drew this. Let me back up a second. That's correct. And if you noticed, I drew one thing in the wrong spot is the load's not in stage five, the load is in stage four. Okay. So at clock cycle four, the load is in, sta is in stage four, then we have the no op, right? Then we have the add instruction, okay? And now as things proceed, okay, we're gonna be able to process this and forward at the next clock cycle, right, we're going to be able to forward the value back just like we normally would. That's just like we did in the um, in the forwarding example. Okay. So just to recap this, let's look at this and say, okay, if we look at this example and I say, at what clock cycle does a stall occur? Okay, in other words, which clock cycle does stall control signal equal one? Okay. Well, first of all, let's detect the dependency the dependency is this, okay? The fact that the load is writing to that register and that the add is reading from it at the following clock cycle. And the stall is going to occur, right, when this instruction, instruction three, okay, when instruction three is in the decode stage, okay? So instruction, three will be in the decode stage and instruction two will be in the execute stage. Just like we saw up here, right, where the load is in the execute stage and the add is in the, um, in the decode stage, that is when we we detect and say, hey, there's a problem, right? There's a problem that there's a load followed by an add that is reading that register, okay? So we wanna say then to answer this, when does the stall occur? Right? When is this stall control signal equal to one? Well, it's when you look at it as either it's when the instruction three is in the decode stage, which is clock cycle four. Okay, that's when the stall is going to occur. Okay. Right, uh, that's the same thing I just said. Let's look at this. Um, how many clock cycles does it take to complete all of this? Well, it's going to take one more than normal, right? So normally this would take, right, if we looked at this, we've got four instructions, okay. Um, the first instruction here would finish at, takes, would take, uh, takes five instructions to finish, uh, five, I'm sorry, it takes five clock cycles to finish. So it would, this would finish at clock cycle five. The load here is gonna finish at clock cycle six. The add here gets delayed it finishes at clock cycle eight, right? Because there's a stall in there, delays it one. And then the last one is one more after that. So this whole thing takes nine clock cycles, okay? So just one more than, than normal. One more than normal because of the stall. Okay, I'm gonna stop the video there. Um, I think this, keep in mind that when you're looking at issues related to data hazards, you got to understand how the pipeline works first, or it's really impossible to make full sense of it. Uh, so if you're confused on anything related to the pipeline, I recommend going back, watching those videos, asking some questions on them. And if you're confused on the pipeline, I recommend going back to look at the single cycle, right? There's a lot of dependencies. You have to understand the single cycle first before understanding the pipeline, understanding the pipeline before looking at issues such as data hazards that come up when we're talking about um, pipeline designs. Um, and uh, if you understand that, right, and you understand, if you're able to understand uh, how the pipeline works and understand how these problems come up related to data hazards and how we have some tools to be able to modify our designs to be able to handle these types of data hazards that come up. Um, what we're gonna look at in the next video is how 
so far we've looked at two solutions that are purely um, architecture based that we look at actually modifying the design of our processor to be able to handle these issues. We have another tool that we can also use, which is having compilers smart enough to try to avoid stalls. Stalls are not optimal, right? We prefer not to waste time. We prefer not to waste clock cycles if we don't have to. And we're going to look at how compilers can um, make things more efficient. And we'll look at a uh, more of a software oriented approach for being able to uh, fix or remove uh, data hazards as well. All right. So thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon.